right, Natalie. Certainly a robust security presence here in lower Manhattan. Court officers, NYPD, also plainclothes detectives, a lot of law enforcement out here. Donald Trump's arraignment itself will be up inside 100 Center Street behind me on the 15th floor, 2.15 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. He'll be in that courtroom. And the message from City Hall is wants everyone, the mayor wants everyone inside and outside court to be on their best behavior. Can I give you this? My sister is missing. Where is Dana Holt? Hi, can I give you guys this? And why on the night of March 1st did she board a train? We're from St. Louis. Bound for Dallas's Union Station. But most importantly for Audrey Clay. If you guys see or hear anything, will you please contact the police? Where is her sister now? I may not know my sister's intentions, but I know something is seriously wrong because my sister would not just up and leave like that. Loved ones say surveillance video shows the 30-year-old getting off a train around noon on March 2nd with bags and help from a man they know nothing about. We just know she was approached by a black male on this platform. Later that day, Holt's mother, who's back in St. Louis, said she got a call. She's like, Mom, you won't let me leave. And she was really upset and crying. And like, who won't let you leave? Where are you? Holt said he was getting out of the shower and she had to go. Nobody has had any contact with her since. While Dallas police investigate, Clay, her wife, and sister in law have come to town to blanket Dallas in flyers hoping someone will have noticed the blonde, who's described as having a big personality. And if my sister sees this, I want her to know I love her. I never would imagine I'd be doing this, never. She's my only sibling, and I won't stop looking for her. A distinguishing feature the family hopes people will keep an eye out for is the fact that Dana has a tattoo on both her neck and chest. Now, with COVID-19 protocols in place at the State Fair, there are several things people should keep in mind if you do plan to attend the game. We have a guide on everything you need to know right now on our website, NBCDFW.com. But tonight, that refreeze has happened, and we have situations like this Areas that really just didn't get enough sun to thaw at all. You can see the street here in downtown still looks like an ice rink. Very similar to situations we saw this morning. Before the sun came out earlier today in the southern part of the county, it was really rough going. That's exactly right, Adam. I'm actually standing right here in the middle of the park where we're expecting a lot of those supporters of the former president to show up. They're expected to be here in mass. We were able to speak to the police commissioner about this today, and she told us her department's ready. Jackson Township with the very latest and how it's looking there. Jessica? Well, first of all, Gilma, thankfully, there have been no reported injuries, but there are still thousands of people without power tonight after what was likely two separate tornadoes in Howell and here in Jackson, where we are right now. And I want you to take a look. This is probably some of the worst damage we have seen all day today. The storm blasting right through the walls of that warehouse that was under construction, causing the roof to collapse as well. Tornado touchdowns in New Jersey, thrashing through this neighborhood in Howell, lifting the entire roof off of this home. We're told a family of five was inside at the time. Debris from this home piercing right through the roof of a neighbor's house and into their main entryway. Thank God everyone's safe. That's number one. You can handle the damage after. Around the corner, a tree landing right into the side of the Silva's home, landing in their guest room. My mom lives with us, so she was like hiding in the closet because she just, you don't know if something's going to come on the house, which way you're supposed to go. It's just scary. Her sons now pitching in to help clean up what they can in the yard. As disaster relief crews with American Red Cross made the rounds, letting people know there's a shelter and warming center available since there are thousands of power outages here. It was just a disaster. On the next block, blown out broken fences and a now mangled trampoline that was tossed from this backyard to the front yard. And now we just have to deal with the aftermath. The aftermath of what now officially was four tornadoes across New Jersey. Lightning, hail, and a dark circulation of clouds spotted in these photos. 
15 minutes away in Jackson, several main roads still shut down. Because of uprooted and downed trees, many falling on power lines. Good for business, not good for your home. Wayne Burke and his crew have a long night ahead of them. You can see where the storm has touched down and hit, you know, properties, bounce, cleared an area, and may not come down for another quarter mile, half mile, hit again, bounce again. National Weather Service meteorologists on the ground in both Howell and Jackson today surveying the damage caused by likely two separate tornadoes, the speed of them still being determined. Unfortunately, New Jersey um, of late seems like it uh, tends to be a hot spot for tornadic activity. I think people are just assessing the damage kind of in disbelief. Definitely a lot of disbelief, but a lot of gratitude that no one was hurt throughout these tornadoes last night. The emergency management coordinator right here in Jackson tells me that power probably won't be restored to the 9,000 or so customers until tomorrow afternoon. A long week ahead for people around here in Jackson, New Jersey. I'm Jessica Cunnington, News 4 New York. The Parade of Champions will take place here at Paul Quinn College at 10 a.m. on Saturday. We're told city leaders and various school district leaders will be in attendance as well. Yeah, good afternoon. DPD confirming this afternoon that at some point at that concert venue, someone fired a shot into the air in response. A person who is unknown at this point then responded by firing a weapon into that concert crowd. It's slow going on the roads tonight. We've seen some slipping and sliding right here. Thankfully, a lot of people are heeding the warning to stay home, but some people who work in essential services don't have that choice. In the place where she was born and raised, Can hear me? the community came together to remember. Where is Zion Little's life? Was a 26 year old gone too soon. Tragically taken April 14, 2021. Cheyenne was my only biological little girl. Um, she was a little spitfire. One year after losing her daughter, Misty Little setting out on a mission to share her story. She took hydrocodone every now and then. She was a big chested girl and she worked on her feet and her back hurt and, and um, to the best of my knowledge, she was given a hydrocodone that she, or what she thought was a hydrocodone, but it was fentanyl and it was four times the lethal dose. And um, my mother found her. Today on the courthouse steps. Do hereby proclaim April 14, 2022 is fentanyl poisoning awareness day. Little launched fiercely fighting fentanyl poisonings a nonprofit with a mission to spread awareness about a crisis that's become the leading cause of death for adults ages 18 to 45. So we want to get into the schools. We want to talk to kids. Uh, we want to make educators and law enforcement and um, everybody aware of what's really out there. Last year in Texas, there were more than 1300 fentanyl related deaths. The governor recently announced an effort to crack down on distribution. Still, the numbers continue to climb, and little hope sharing Cheyenne's story. Thank you from uh, the bottom of my heart. Will prevent another family from experiencing her grief. Losing a child, I hear people talk about it all the time, but it is it's a pain like no other. In Hunt County, I'm going to use that, and I'm going to we're going to save other kids. Allie Spilliards, NBC5. <sighs> With each stride, Rena Elmer finds her strength. If there's something important to you, you have to work really hard at it to achieve it. Recharging a little more with each passing mile before the school day comes to an end. That's my time alone. <laughs> After that. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, kids, kids, kids. All of Rena's time and energy turns to her nine kids. Three years ago, marriage brought together this modern-day Brady Bunch, all between the ages of just 12 and 1. For Rena, it's a balancing act that led her to give up her first love of running track. I had just been thinking about this and praying, like, what should I do? She realized training for marathons would let her run when and where she could fit it in. A lot of these marathoners are putting in 80 to 100 miles a week. I'm putting in more like 45 to 55 miles a week. Still, when competing in her first race after training for just 18 weeks, I didn't look at my watch. I just went for it. She surprised herself 
finishing 26.1 miles in Indianapolis in just two hours and 40 minutes, qualifying her for this year's Olympic trials. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? For Rena, that alone is enough. I mean, this is the 500 fastest women in our country, and I get to be part of that. This weekend in Atlanta, only the top three will go on to represent the United States. And though she'll have a full squad rooting her on, I think I, have, I, think I have more people cheering me on than anyone. <laughs> instead of winning, she's focused on showing them what matters most. I'm happy to be going and have my nine children and balance that because I mean, that's what makes me the happiest. Though she has to admit, I'm not going to say it's impossible. <laughs> you never know what could happen. In Flower Mound, Alley Spilliards, NBC5. Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy Leduc step onto their home ice. I mean, this rink here in Euless, I mean, this is where I've grown up. In all the right ways, it is warm inside. We love to skate, and we're so, so grateful that we get to do something that we love. And we feel that every single day when we come in. After six years together, it is not just their bodies that are in sync. When we take each other's hand, we really know how the other one is feeling. I'd say it's like a like a really good soup after it has time to <laughs> goober. It's just like, it's right, you know? We really like each other. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, you can stay. Yeah, yeah I'll stay. take you. <laughs> we're, like, we're like siblings. Yeah. Figure skating is grueling, a mind-boggling blend of athleticism and artistry. Reaching the top is never guaranteed. The moving through the highs and lows of everything has taught me so much more about myself, about life, and about the sport in a way that, like, I don't know, I just appreciate so much more. It goes mm -hmm. like this, up and down, and you have to keep turning around and collecting yourself and moving forward. Especially when some people doubt you. We don't necessarily fit the archetype of success that you typically see. At 5'6", Ashley is taller than most women who skate pairs. She's been a beacon for um, people of different body types to show them like, hey, you can still be successful at something even if you don't fit the archetype of success that you typically see. Timothy talks openly about his sexual identity. And for me as a queer athlete, you know, we don't often see queer visibility in sports. As they perfect their programs, Ashley and Timothy hope to do the same for figure skating itself. We really feel like we've kind of reached the top of the sport and we started to shape it in ways um, that are meaningful. Winning the national title in 2019 served notice to the world that the team from North Texas had arrived. Then came COVID. It's been hard. Yeah, honestly. for sure. Making it into the ring some days was the, the goal that was accomplished. On the path to Beijing, the pandemic was a black hole. All of a sudden, we didn't have anything next. Yeah. Like there was nothing on our schedule. And that was the first time that that ever happened. And we didn't know what to look forward to or what to work towards. Ashley herself battled the virus and recovered. Their momentum is now back, thanks in part to their coaches. Down in your knees. The coaches here are so tuned into helping each athlete be the best athlete that they can be. It's better. Good. Those encouraging words come from Ashley's mom and dad, who were both elite figure skaters themselves. That just means so much to me to know that like, I always do have that support system. It's never been weird for me because they're still the right people for the job. They just happen to be Ashley's parents. So now it is on to the national championships where Team Kane hopes to score a ticket to China. We said that we didn't yeah, go there. We obviously sure. think about it every day. Yeah. Sometimes, yes, it can become overwhelming and all consuming, but you also have to think like, but I'm in this position because I want to be. And also because Ashley Kane Gribble and Timothy Leduc have earned it. We want this so badly. This is something we've wanted our whole lives, and we're so close.